we're here to chat about uh, the monsters and a, and a couple of other things. Um, now, this is a film that Rob Zombie has been trying to make for I think, like a couple of decades. Um, he's this big, you know, outspoken fanboy for for the series. So when he he comes to you and says, Jeff, I want you to be, you know, Herman Munster, how how does that feel? Well, so it happened about 12 years ago. And um it, there was one time we were going to do it earlier. And I was driving and and you know, as you are in Los Angeles, you're always driving and I get the call and I just had to pull over because I just started breathing, started kind of hyperventilating like what do you mean? He goes, I don't know. I'm trying to get this thing together. So uh, I was very, I mean, obviously very honored, but yeah, anxiety ridden because Fred Gwynn is so iconic and and I always loved the show too growing up. So, uh, and then it didn't happen. Um, somebody else did a version. And then a few years ago, we were about to do it again. So every time it happened, I would get excited. And then by the time we did it, I was a lot more calm, a lot more relaxed. It's just like, let's get it on. You know, I, I've done my studying. I did what I needed to do to prepare. And then we went forth. So was preparation just, you know, watching like every monster's morsel that you could come across? Yeah, we we watched a lot of it. I mean, I'll I'll be upfront though. I'm I'm not doing an impersonation. I, I'm not an impressionist. I just wanted to honor the original performance and bring some of his mannerisms, um, as everybody does in the cast. Um, Sherry does the same thing. It's not exactly uh, the same as Yvonne, but, you know, she brings her own version. And uh, and Dan Bell, he does the best as far as an impersonation. He does sound like him a lot and his his tics and mannerisms. But, um, yeah, we we just it's a love letter to the show. We we're big fans of the show, all of us. And so we just wanted to make something that had the same spirit of the of the original show, the same wackiness, goofy, fun, just because we think, you know, it's kind of needed right now. I don't know. Yeah. And in a way, it's it's almost a prequel to the original series. So you don't necessarily have to be doing any impersonation because nobody nobody knows what the monsters were doing before before they moved into into the iconic house. Right. It's an origin story. So uh, my uh, Herman is just created in the movie, as we know. Um, I think it showed it in the trailer, so I'm not giving anything away. Um, but yeah, he's uh, trying to find himself. He's uh, I took it like almost like a teenager, young in love, trying to find his voice. Um, you know, he's like the the body, his his mind is from somebody else. And it's uh, here I say uh, like a Ford Fiesta, but like a Cinquecento. He's used to driving a Cinquecento and, and now he's driving a muscle car. So he's trying to figure out his body. His voice is singing. He's with her. Um, yeah. So it, 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 we didn't have to, you know, the Herman on TV show was established. He had a family. He had a kid. He had a house and everything. So, yeah, he's he's a little more, you know, wily and and and, and young. Yeah. I think Kermit the Frog once sang It Ain't Easy Being Green. What are your feelings on that uh, on that subject? Yeah, it wasn't easy. It was four hours of makeup every day. Um, and then an hour to get out. So yeah, it was green everywhere in my ear and, you know, every orifice, is, if, if you can imagine. But but the Hungarian team, there was a Hungarian FX team. They were all women. Um, they were fantastic. And that's that sometimes can be very grueling when you're on a prosthetic type shoot like this. And they were just the best. I, I thought they were the greatest, the very talented, very professional and so excited that we were there so and did you know you got your trademark you know Tash was that did that have to go for the shoot did they yeah, yeah. It? <laughs> yeah it wasn't a Cesar Romero where he just kind of covers the you know no everything went you know it was pretty clean shaven throughout and how do, how was that? Because you know, I mean, it's like you know, men's facial hair is very much like you know, women's hair. You know, it 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 is part of you. So to to suddenly look in the mirror and it it's not there anymore. To be honest with you, I'd shave this up tomorrow for a part. I don't have a problem with that, but it's harder to grow one. And and I have a you know, I'm a stickler. I when I see a movie where you could tell the guy has a glued on mustache or fake you know sideburns, I'd rather cut it off for the part than you know try to put glue things on my face which I, I never see that looks that great, you know, wig lines and everything else. So 
Yeah, I've been trying to get on this Western, so I'm just keeping what, what I got going on right now. Nice. And, you know, the other part of, of the, you know, of, of Herman Munster is his height. You're already quite tall yourself, but you're having to be even taller. What was it like, you know, wearing platforms? Because I'm guessing like with platforms, you're like seven feet or something ridiculous. Yeah, I'm close to seven feet. Um, I, I was trying to do yoga like every morning just because I, I only fell a few times, but I thought for sure I was going to twist my knee, my ankle, and I and I fell on set. And, you know, sometimes we're filming all night long. It's dark out. You trip over something. But um, yeah, I, I think I, I think I kept pretty limber. Otherwise, I definitely would have been in the ER at one point, you know. And you and Rob have got a long history of working together. You know, what is it about a, a Rob Zombie production and a Rob Zombie set? set that keeps you uh, coming back so when you work with rob I, this is my fifth film um he's he's very passionate he's a director who has like his hand in everything on the film like you're wearing a shirt and there's a logo he, he's designed the logo the music we did for the monsters we did music months before the the production ever started um he just uh, all the all the production design because he does have a background in that and in graphics so it, when he shows up on set you, it's just contagious and everybody that works on his films they just kind of want to match that 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 passion and so that's that's you know I, I'm really honored that I've done five of his films and I and I think he definitely respects me and and knows I have a similar uh work ethic I'd say and and it's just he he surrounds himself by a bunch of actors that are egoless and we're all just like trying to work towards the same thing. Nobody comes in like a diva or anything like that. And, and that's why he, there's a, a group of us, and especially on a shoot like this. Um, it was during the pandemic, um, right in the heart of it. None of us were vaccinated. Um, there was like four or five of us um, that were going to not be masked because we had prosthetics. Um, we had to fly into a place that was, they had a curfew, the, all the restaurants shut and we didn't see anybody. Everybody said, Hey, how was Budapest? Nothing. I never went to restaurants, anything. I just, for three months, we were just focused on this. So yeah, it, you, you can't have a group of people that you don't trust. And that's why he tends to do that where he uses a group of people that he's had an experience with, or he trusts because one wrong person can really throw off your schedule on something like this because it's it's so um taxing yeah yeah it definitely seems like especially when you add in the the pandemic and it was a very different film as well to what the uh the rob zombie fanatics are used to you know this is much more family friendly it's color you know everywhere are you uh are you excited to uh maybe bring in some new fans into uh yeah I, well so i in promoting this in the states i would go to these conventions and so many little kids and families and i've never had that so that was that's been a, a real trip um yeah it's great and i'm glad he's being seen by all these different people too uh it's just like a big cartoon. It's just it's out there for fun and, you know, family enjoyment. And I, yeah, I mean, we're on set. We're like, you know, who's who's going to get killed on this or their head cut off? Oh, no, that's not this kind of film, you know. So, yeah, we were really excited about being involved in something that, you know, can reach a bigger group. And and I can actually have some of my family members watch it. So, you know, that's good. Yeah, I mean, another another film that you're in that I guess uh, younger members of family can't watch was the uh, Christmas, uh, Bloody Christmas, which was uh, released on Shudder at the uh, at the end of last year. Um, at what point you know, that you're a you're a sheriff, there's a, a killer robot Santa. At what point reading the script were you like, sign me up? No, well, you know what it is? It's just uh, Joe Vegas. He um, and it's pronounced Vegas, by the way, not Begos. Vegas. But um he he's he's a great guy like Rob Zombie. He he's um you know he's really into it. He's written all his movies. He directs them and he in Joe's case, he shoots them too with su Super 16. So he's in the middle of it trying to talk you through it, holding the camera. Um they worked on it for 8 weeks, night shoots. I mean, he's just a he's a monster this guy. So um, I knew him, I don't know, probably five, seven years ago, I met him. 
And he goes, I want to do something with you. And, and nothing seemed to fall into place. But yeah, he called me and he said, hey, you you up for coming up, you know, and doing this thing for a week? I, yeah, I'm in. So, yeah, I agree before I even, you know, read it or anything. He's just a good guy. And I like that kind of um, indie vibe. Yeah. And I mean, I think in in many ways, he kind of feels a bit like Rob Zombie. You know, you've got Rob's obviously this big, you know, heavy metal like musician as well as being a film director. And I think Joe, if you cut him, you know, down the middle, he is just heavy metal rock and roll. I kind of feel that there's almost a, a kinship there. Would you, having worked with both of them, do you agree that they, there's perhaps some similarities in their, in their work? Yeah, sure. There's similarities as far as the spirit of making it indie and just doing it no matter what. You know, they they... They they want to get their budgets and at a certain level that nobody will bother them and they could do whatever they want. So, yeah, they're very similar. Um, I know Joe's a big fan of Rob. So, you know, that's I'm sure he's inspired him a lot. Rob's inspired, you know, a lot of filmmakers for that reason. Yeah, definitely and you sort of touched upon it earlier but outside of acting you are a, a regular on the convention circuit. What is it that you enjoy about going to these events? You know, I, I tend to do them right when a project comes out, um, just because I feel like that's part of the game and getting out there, telling everybody about it. I don't, you know, you can never trust what the internet's going to say. You can never trust what, you know, the promotion of the company is going to do. I try to do what I can. I, there's usually a few of us, um, and that's always fun. My friend Richard Brake who's a great actor. And as you know, he's been in so many movies, but he's also been in Rob's movies. He he's plays Dr. Wolfgang. So uh, he lives in the UK um, and it's fun because I get to see him. So we we meet in different parts of the state. We hang out, we talk to everybody. And yeah, it, the horror fans are the most passionate, loyal people there are. And, and I learned that over the last, you know, five or six years. And so I'm honored just to be part of it. Recently, I did. Um, recently, I did one in Michigan, and they they told me like the morning of you go, that you're going to be part of some independent uh, panel on independent filmmaking. I had no idea, and I went there, and and there wasn't you know there's a hand I don't know about 30, 40 people there, and um, it's Sunday morning, and I found it so. I don't know. I was so inspired by these guys asking questions. How do you do it? And I, I didn't realize I had a lot to offer. You know, I, I, I do, I, I do try to help these, you know, young filmmakers when I can, but we, we talked and we talked and how to do this and do readings and try to get your friends together, create a, a tribe of, you know, similar thinking people. And then by the end of it, I, I'm on my flight home. I'm like, why aren't I doing this again? I, I used to do it more often. I just got caught up in, you know, life. And so in fact, I am now. I'm shooting something. Right after that, I go, I, I got to get something together, you know? So uh, I, I'm shooting something this week. I'm just chipping away. But yeah, so I got something from them more than they got from me, as far as I'm concerned. They just inspired me and it got me thinking again. Nice. So it's reciprocal. Uh and um, I, when I spoke to I spoke to Richard a couple of years back, um, we were sort of talking about conventions and things. And uh, one of the the big things, especially with talking about horror fans being really passionate, is you know they like a, they like to get a tattoo. You know, have you have you had any uh, your version Richard. of the tattoos uh, coming through? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of people that have got Richard just inked on them forever. <laughs> It's so crazy. <laughs> Richard and I were next to each other on some girl's thigh. I was like, wow, that's that's a weird one. But um, anyway, yeah, he, he seems to get a lot because of that character, uh, 31, Doomhead. And uh, and if you ever watch that, I don't think he blinks in the whole movie. So uh, he's a he's a crazy, uh, you know, convincing killer. That's for sure. Yeah. But any any Herman monsters yet? Is any anyone? Oh uh, yeah, there has been. There's been a few. I've seen at least three or four. Yeah, not in person though. So someday. Nice. Yeah. And you know, with you know, we're at the start of the year. You've mentioned that you've you know you've got a project that you're working on at the moment, filming wise. But what else is uh, what else does the year have? Well, uh, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because there's a couple things that got postponed. I thought I was going to be shooting something this month, and we'll see what happens. You know, there. It, I tend to, uh, you know, I, occasionally I'll do a TV thing, but 
I lean towards the independent films and those, you know, it's all hinged on whether they get their financing. So um, I'm always rooting for them, but it always, you know, it's touch and go, you know. And I imagine that now that, you know, Rob spent, you know, 20 years getting his his baby out into the world. I imagine he's probably already knees deep in an idea for the next one. Are you hoping that you uh, get that call again to uh, go back onto set? You know, I'm always hoping for that. But, you know, I've, I've had a five film run with them. So I'm honored if you ever ask me. But, you know, I, I don't ever expect anything. He's, you know, he's got so many things going on between his concerts, his animation, his music is you know I, he's just he's constantly and you don't realize that spending three months with him um he is focused on this film but he's constantly bombarded by people asking for something or a different project or so you know he's he he's constantly working always always he's doing a he'll be doing a painting he'll be doing whatever he's moving across country whatever he's doing he's busy so yeah, I, I try to stay, you know, I stay quiet until he needs me and then I, you know, I jump in. And like I said, working with Sherry and working with the rest of the people that he he tends to uh, draw back, you know, I'm always honored and it's always a privilege to be like surrounded by these people. And finally, back to, uh, back to the Munsters, what is the... Uh... You know the ideal viewing scenario. You know who who should be watching this film with, and and why should people be seeking it out? Well, I mean, it, you could be the fan of the original show. You could be someone that knows nothing about it. I think you could go in knowing that uh, we're trying to honor it, and we're trying to do something in the same spirit. We're not trying to replace it. Um, for kids, it's a it's like a gateway into horror. I guess that kids can watch it, and it's it's more fun. It's just like a big cartoon come to life. Um, and there's a bunch of other cool actors that you might know, like Jorge Garcia from Lost, um, uh, Cassandra Peterson, she's in it, like all these different characters that you might get a kick out of seeing differently from what you're normally seeing. So, uh, yeah, I think I think it's just a fun time. I don't think anybody should be so uh, wound up and what what if we're taking away from something originally, I mean, there's been Adams Family movies forever. And uh, this is something that I think would be nice to like push towards the forefront and have people excited about again, because I think it's a worthy project. Definitely. Well, I wish you best of luck with the uh, UK release. Yeah, thank you so much.